Welcome to Wes Explains Best. Today we're going to be doing a CUDA software worksheet tutorial on factoring trinomials. This is probably one of the most discussed uh, sections of uh, mathematics. Um, there's a ton of emphasis on this for some reason. Uh, I'm not saying it's a good or bad reason. I'm just saying there's some reason and <laughs> a lot of people chose, choose to focus on this. Um, it does have its merits in, in uh, uses in mathematics, but I think the best part about it is kind of like a puzzle. And let me explain. So if we have something like this, this is a trinomial. It's called a trinomial because it has three terms. One, two, three. You should be able to see that pretty clearly. Okay. Now, this is something that because there's no greatest common factor between all three terms, we need to put it into multiplication of two binomials. Now, what happens here? Well, we learned earlier in foiling and dist uh, the distribution uh, property that um, when you multiply the first terms, you end up getting uh, the b squared that you have here. The first, the first terms in each parenthesis end up giving you the first term in the trinomial. So what about the last term? The last term is a result of multiplying, let me make these two squigglies, the two second slots together. Now, what happens with this middle term? This middle term is a result of the sum of the inside and the outside terms. So this is a sum of inside and outside terms of the parentheses. Now this would be a good spot to pause it and, and jot this down if you didn't if you didn't know that already. Okay, so this is a product of the first two terms of the first terms and then the parentheses. This is a product of the last terms. This is a product of the last terms, and then we have the sum of the inside and outside terms. Let me uh, break this down into this. Uh, into we'll just go ahead and do the problem so you can understand how it how it's applied. So the first thing I always like to do is, and we won't do this in the future, but I just want to show you for the first step. We're going to think of the factors. Let me change this to green. Let's stay consistent here. We're going to look for the factors of b squared. What times itself, or what times what equals b squared? Well, that's clearly b times b. Those are the only two factors that give you b squared. So we're going to go ahead and write b and b in there. Now, what about 7? Well, with 7... What we're going to do, hold on, style, get that uh, blue color. We're going to list all the factors of 7. So the only factors of 7 are 7 and 1. So that makes it a little easy for us. So we can go ahead and write 7 and 1 there too. But we also should consider 7 times negative 1. Now, we, 7 times, a negative 7 times negative 1 also equals negative 7. Or excuse me, positive 7. So maybe I shouldn't have been so quick with writing down positive 7 and positive 1. So how do I know it's going to be positive 7 and positive 1? Well, that's where this one comes in. The middle term is an indication of which terms you should choose because the factors of 7 need to add up to the middle coefficient of 8. So this equals 8 when you add 7 plus 1. Sorry, this is that's a little misleading. 7 plus 1 equals 8, but... 8 does not equal negative 7 plus a negative 1. Therefore, we're going to choose these as our factors for 7. So 7, 1, and we're, they're both positive, positive, and that is how we factor. Okay. Now, let me just foil this out so you can see why this works. Okay. It's, a, it's good to, good practice to check your answer anyway. But we're going to go ahead and foil this out. So I'm going to do top or b times both of those terms, and then I'm going to do, might as well use this blue, and then a 1 times both those terms. What happens? I get b squared plus 7b, and then I get 1b plus 1b plus 7. The only terms you are able to combine are these two, so you get b squared plus 8b plus 7. And what do you know? That is what we had. But we went from standard form the original problems in standard form, and we went to factored form. Factored form is very useful with some other things. Again, there's a lot of emphasis put on it on this throughout the years, but I like it because it's kind of like a puzzle. Let's do another example just so you can kind of understand the principle of it a little bit more. So let's go to number four. So the first thing you always want to do 
is set up your parentheses. Once you see that there's no greatest common factor, okay, you're going to set up your parentheses for a binomial. What I like to do is I always like to underline that first term, and then I know those factors are going in the first slot. And then I like to give a different kind of uh, underline with uh, the last term, and then I put two squigglies in the second slot. Consider this slot one, and consider this slot two, okay? Slot one, slot two of each parenthesis. Okay, now, again, considering factors of n squared, it's n and n. This, this is going to be fairly common when a equals 1. When it's talking about a equals 1, it's talking about the coefficient of x squared. So when it's 1, it's always just going to be the variable um, in the first slot. This is where it gets a little bit more complicated. When you have numbers with multiple factors like 12 and 1, negative 12, negative 1, Okay, so that's multiplication, times, times. Then we have negative 4 times negative 3, positive 4 times positive 3, positive 6 times positive 2, negative 6 times negative 2, and I think that's it. I think we got all the factors of 12. Now, oh, I'm sorry, it's negative 12, so I need to change this around a little bit. It's either going to be negative 12 times positive 1 or 12, positive 12 times negative 1, negative 4 times positive 3, or negative 4, or negative positive 4 times negative 3. Basically, we're just trying to find every combination of positive negatives that get to negative 12. I'm including this negative here when I'm considering the factors of negative 12. So what do I do now? Well, I'm looking for factors of negative 12 that will add up to a positive 4. Which one of these adds up to positive 4? These add up to negative 11. That's no good. These add up to positive 11. That's no good. These add up to negative 1, no good. Positive 1, no good. Negative 4, now we're nowhere close. Anytime you get the number but it's the opposite sign, you know you're close with the factors. You just need to switch the signs. So we go to positive 6 and negative 2 to get positive 4, and that's our answer. So we're going to choose a positive 6 and a negative 2. And it doesn't matter if we put n plus 6 first and n minus 2 second. It's the same thing, but now we know we factored it correctly. You can check your answer by foiling n squared plus 6n minus 2n minus 12. This adds up to 4n minus 12n squared, and that's how you know you did this correctly. Let's do another example just so you absolutely get it. I know this video is kind of running long already, but hopefully you fast forward through some of this. Okay, so we got parentheses set up. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to underline this. Um, let's stay consistent. Let's go red this time, double squiggly. So double squigglies go here, double squiggly, and then we have single for the first slot, single for the first slot. So we're thinking of our factors of k squared, obviously just k and k. 40 is going to be a little bit daunting because we need to get a positive 40. Now, here's the thing. Here I had a clue that... There's, there's certain patterns that you see. If this is negative, that means that one of the signs must be positive, one must be negative, obviously, because you have to have a positive times a negative. Here we have a positive, okay, so that means both signs need to match. It's either going to positive times positive or negative times negative, but the middle term is negative. So what does that mean? If the middle term is negative, that means both of these signs must be negative. I'll explain what I mean. You can't choose 10 times 4 because that will give you a more positive number when you add the two numbers together. You get 10 plus 4, 14. You don't want a positive number, but if we picked negative 10 and negative 4, now we're looking at negative 14. Look, we're a lot closer to negative 13 when we add negative 10 and negative 4 than we were with positives. So we're going to stick with negatives, okay? So we're only, we're only going to look at the negative factors. So as we said, we have negative 40 times negative 1. That equals positive 40. We have negative 20 times negative 2, okay, then we have negative 8 times negative 5, negative 10 times negative 4, and I think that's it. Now, we're going to look here at our middle coefficient, we see negative 13, which of these adds up to negative 13 when we add the 2, negative 5 plus a uh, negative 8 equals negative 13, we found our answer. So this is going to be negative 13 minus 5, and there we go. Hope this was helpful. I know it was a lot all at once, but uh, this takes a lot of practice. It's kind of like a puzzle, and I'll see you next time on West Explains.